In this video, I'm going to talk about required practical two, which involves using a Young's double slit and a diffraction grating to find the wavelength of this laser. Okay, I'll, in my class, you'll be tested on the following CPACs. 1A, which is that you can follow written instructions. 3A, that you uh, write a risk assessment and that you follow it safely. And 4A and 4B, which is that you can take accurate measurements into a table. So you're measuring the correct things and writing that down correctly into the table. And that finally you can get an accurate value for the wavelength once you analyze your data. Here are the written instructions that you'll be given for the double slit experiment. Now in this one, you're going to first of all choose a laser. So you might use a different color. You might not use red, but I'll use this red one here. You need to note down the wavelength that's written on the laser. Okay, and you'll have to write down the slit separation of your double slit. And then what you're going to do in this practical is that you're going to be changing the distance to the screen. Okay, and you'll be measuring the width of the fringes for each distance that you use. Okay, now you don't just measure the width straight away like this. You'll measure the width of a number of fringes and you'll count them very carefully because a lot of students mis uh, miscount this. So for example, here it's seven and then you divide it by the distance by seven to get the width of each fringe. You'll be given instructions for the diffraction grating practical as well. So first of all, start off by noting down the disk slit separation. Okay. Now slit separation can be determined by using one over the number of lines per meter, but most often on the diffraction grating it gives you a number of lines per millimeter, in which case you'll have to divide one over a number of lines per millimeter, then divide it by a thousand to get your distance in meters between um, each slit. And it's going to be a very small distance. Okay, then after that, write down the laser's wavelength again. And you're also going to keep the distance to the screen constant. So you're going to have to note that down as well. You'll be using that later. Okay, so during the actual practical, you'll be looking at the different orders. So the central one is called the zeroth order. And then you've got the first, second, and third, and so on on either side. And you'll have to figure out H1, which is the distance from the zeroth order to the first order. And then you'll be doing that for every other order. The aim of this is to find the angle to that particular order. So for example, theta one would be the angle from the zero to the first order. Okay, so you can figure that out by doing tan inverse of H1, which is distance from the zero to the first order, and then divide that by the D, which is the distance of the screen. Okay, now the best way to figure out H1 isn't actually just measure it from the zero order. I would measure from the first order to the first order and then divide that by two. Okay, and then repeat this again to get the distance to the second order, and then divide that by two to get the H2. And then they gain tan inverse with the distance to the screen. Okay, and then repeat this for as many orders as you can. Okay, secondly, you need to write a risk assessment before you start the practical. So as you'll be working with lasers, here are some things that you can mention in your risk assessment. What could happen if you look at the laser light? In fact, what could happen if you look at a reflection of the laser light? Because that's still dangerous as well. Okay, so you can mention that. Uh, you can mention how you're going to avoid looking at the laser light. So, for example, if you are taking a measurement at the screen, are you going to turn around and just look directly backwards or are you always going to look towards the screen while you're in front of the laser? OK, and then how are you going to avoid reflective surfaces? So, you know, obviously behind the screen or next to the screen, you don't want any reflective surfaces. So you need to mention that. And what are you going to do when you're not taking any measurements? So you're going to just leave the laser on or are you going to turn it off? Okay, those are all things that you should write in the risk assessment. You can also do some bit more research and add that onto your risk assessment. Okay, step three is to make a table to record your results. So first of all, you need to have some constant that you just need to write down. For example, the wavelength that's written on the laser so that you can compare this with the answer that you get then and the slit separation. So uh, for example, I use a red light which is 650 nanometers and 0 0.1 millimeter separation between my slits. And then you'll take, you'll be changing the distance to the screen. So you'll need to measure that in meters. And then you've got the width of the fringes, which obviously you won't measure the width of each fringe directly. You'll be uh, averaging over a number of fringes. So here's an example of the data that I got. And the reason why I'm showing this is because if you wrote this down, like the data shows here, you'd fail. Because if you look at this data here, all the data should be to the same number of decimal places in a given column. So for example, that six here, that's wrong. It should really be what the student meant here was 6.0. Okay, so make sure it's all to the correct number of decimal places. Otherwise, you'll fail that CPAC. You'll need another table for the diffraction grating practical as well. So there's a bunch of constants you're going to have to record, for example, the slit separation. And remember, you might have to do one over the number of slits per millimeter, for example, to find the slit separation. And then the distance to screen, which is a constant, and the wavelength that's written on the laser. 
and then you're going to look at each order so that's going to be on the left column there the order number and then you can find the distance from the zeroth order to that particular order so h1 h2 h3 and so on and then you can use that to find the angle and here's the equation so that's tan inverse of the distance to that order divided by the distance to the screen which you've already noted down and finally you're going to find the wavelength for each one of those orders so you can use that using this equation here which is the diffraction grating equation and once you've written that down we'll analyze the data later okay carry out the practical and determine the wavelength so in the double slit one the equation is the width of the fringe is equals lambda d which is a uh, capital d which is the distance to the screen over the slit separation I'm going to compare that to the equation of a line y equals mx plus c and on because there is no there should be no intercept it should be there should be a plus c uh, on the y-axis I'm going to plot the width of the fringes on the x-axis I'm going to plot the distance to the screen so hopefully you can see the thing that's multiplying the distance to the screen is going to be our gradient that's lambda over s okay so our gradient is lambda over s so I'm going to do change in y over change in x on this graph and I'm going to figure out the gradient and I'm going to take the gradient and I'm going to multiply by a slit separation which I've already written down in my data tables and that's going to give me the wavelength okay hopefully that matches what I've written down as being the laser's wavelength and I can give you a comment on that and to analyze the results from the diffraction grating practical you've already done most of the work you've already got wavelength that for the each order all you have to do is figure out the average of those orders and then you can compare it to what uh, was written on the laser